Hello everybody and welcome back to the Oxbridge Formula as we bring you the ultimate guide to colleges at Cambridge and at Oxford. Today we are delighted to have three girls with us and giving you a first hand insight to the real life at St Hughes in Oxford. Remember our support doesn't stop here at the Oxbridge Formula, we also offer a variety of in-depth online sessions and intensive courses aimed at best preparing you for applying to Oxbridge STEM subjects as well. You can visit our webpage for more information. The links will be in the description, so take a look. And don't miss out on our blog for more content on student life and experiences at Oxbridge. So, hi guys, how are you doing today? So let's get to know you. I wonder if we could go around and you could just tell us what subjects you study at St. Hughes and for how long have you been there? Um, I'm Alice. I'm a first year at St. Hughes and I study classics. Hi, I'm Gracie and I'm a first year earth scientist at St Hughes. And I'm Tadrianne and I do human sciences and I'm a first year at St Hughes. Oh, so you've all just finished your first year. Wow. Mm -hmm. And how is, I mean, if we're discarding this final virtual <laughs> Trinity term that we've had to do in the 2020 pandemic, <laughs> how has your um, kind of first year experience been do you reckon you could sum it up in like one word uh, unexpected <laughs> <laughs> in what way unexpected it's just been really unexpected not where i expected to be in ways that the tutorial system and everything so like was it positive in the end or was it yeah. like unexpected as in like was the system confusing the way that no um, they, they provided a lot more support than I expected they would have, which is really great in terms of, it made everything really easy going and much more, I don't know, comfortable. And yeah, the human, which I think yeah. a lot of people forget about Oxford. So Tadrian, what about you? Could you sum up your first year? Well, I think I'd say either whirlwind or roller coaster. <laughs> I'll ride. <laughs> But yeah, it's been more ups and downs, aren't there? Yeah. But definitely more ups than downs. What was like some of your favourite moments, your ups on this roller coaster whirlwind journey? Um, I think Freshers Week was really fun. Um, and getting to know all the people at St. Hughes and other colleges and joining societies. The Freshers Fair was really good. What did you have at Freshers Fair? Was it like college or oh, the university one? Or I know that sometimes colleges do their own. So like at Somerville, we have one with all of societies that are like unique to our college alone. But then there's the big uni one, isn't there? Yeah, so we had both at St. Hughes and one at the university. And I think they were both really enjoyable and we got to learn a lot about the different societies offered. Cool. And do you do any now still? For more information on Oxbridge Colleges, subjects and to get help with the application process, visit oxbridgeformula.co.uk. Click subscribe and ring the notification icon to be notified when we release new content. Um, so I sing a cappella with the Oxford Bells and I am also currently Communication Secretary for the Bengali Society. Oh wow. So you've yeah. got to take on a few opportunities, even in your first year. That's so good to hear. What about yes. you, Alice? You had some time to think about <laughs> how you describe your first year. Um, honestly, I've not. I don't think I, I've got like a single word that I can use to describe it. Because kind of like the others have said, um, I feel like it was just a lot. Just generally, like I've, I've really loved my first year. Um, I guess that's why it's like extra sad that we weren't there for, for Trinity just because I, I um, yeah, like I have loved it so much. Yeah, we'll appreciate it even more when we do go back. Mm, though, for thing. sure, yeah. So Can't when wait. you guys return to the college, um, are you able to live on site or are you living out next year around the city? Yeah, so in Hughes, we, um, we have the option to live in college um for like for for a whole um that like undergrad degree so i think oh, wow um i mean i don't want to like speak for everyone but i'm pretty sure we're all um planning on um staying in college yeah especially now when everything's so uncertain it's really nice to know that there's a place for you mm -hmm. there yeah 
gives a bit of security, I guess. And it just <laughs> takes a bit of hassle away from having to figure stuff out as well, I suppose. Yeah, it's true. We have enough to think about as Oxbridge students as it is, really. <laughs> so it's like the fact that there's a policy on you not really taking on any part-time work for your own health sake. But yeah, it is nice that the college will just let you live on site. It makes life a lot easier. So Gracie, have you got an on-site room um, for you next year? And if so, I wonder if you could describe it for those who don't know much about the accommodation at Hughes. Um, so there's quite a few buildings at Hughes that are usually like designated into different years. So for freshers, there's three different buildings, I think. Kenyon, Maplethorpe and the main building. I was in two buildings last year, um, Maplethorpe and Kenyon, because I moved just to be closer to my friends because most of my friends were in this one building and I was somewhere else. Um, and they let you do that, was that? problematic or was that okay for me I was very fortunate there was a spare room going in the building that I moved to for Hillary term yeah Hillary term oh my lord and they said yeah I was lucky enough that there was a spare room going but I'm not usually sure if that happens generally yeah I mean it's interesting because um it rings true with me I had a friend who was all on his own in a building kind of on the other side of our like square quad inside the college and there was a spare room on our floor um, and he was able to move. But I think if you have a legitimate reason, it is something that you're often able to do. So it's nice that I guess you prioritize kind of the social aspect of living and not particularly like, I don't know, was the room quality, did it, does it vary or is it quite consistent across the buildings? Maplethorpe has, really really they have the nicest rooms in the entire college I think and then Kenyan rooms they're a bit more they're smaller but they're more comfortable and more homely and than the maple foot rooms the maple foot rooms tend to be a bit more modern um and then the main building rooms I don't think I've actually ever seen one of those but I so I can't really describe <laughs> they like yeah I think they vary in size depending on like what subject you do. So if you do music or art, you tend to get a bigger room with like a piano or something. Oh, okay, so to accommodate that. That's mm -hmm. fair enough. I'm sure that would be good to know for anybody who wanted to pursue their interests or study those things. Tashrian, what about you? I wonder if you could remember um, when you first moved into the college and the room that you moved into and how that made you feel. Did you like it? So in first year, my room was in the Kenyan building. And I think um, I'd stayed in a main building room at interviews. And in those rooms, you share, I think, eight toilets between 26 people on your floor. So one of the pros of main building is that it's very social. Whereas in Kenyan, I think it's floors of 12 people. Um, and you don't have an ensuite, but you have a sink. And I think I really preferred having that in my room first year. Um, and also you have really nice, I had a really nice balcony as well in my room. So wow. with a massive window and a window seat. So that's a pro of Kenyon. Did and it overlook the college? Um, it overlooks one of the lawns because St. Hughes is very lucky in having, I think, 14 acres of land. So it's a nice view to look out on. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you guys a bit about the layout of St. Hughes um, because I don't I have to confess, I don't know too much about your college myself. Um, but what I do know is that it's quite a way out of the city centre. Does that make a difference in that it means that your college is less compact and more spread out, like Tajrian said? I think it's quite nice to be away from the busyness of the centre. And then you have that sort of segregation between like town is where uni is and then home is where St. Hughes is. And That's it's quite nice. nice to have segregation. And also, if you have a bike, I don't think the journey is too bad at all. Like it's a five minute cycle or 10 minute cycle. And is there somewhere in the college where you can put your bike? I think we have at least four places where you can keep bikes around college. Oh, that's, yeah, that's good to know that you don't have to worry about like putting them out on the street and things like that. Because I know it can get a bit tricky uh, when you're in Oxford because there are so many people who want to cycle. So Alice then, um, I was going to ask a bit about um, do you have to travel far for like your faculty and your academic stuff? 
um, and okay. is that an issue for you? So I guess um, I'm especially lucky anyway because my faculty, I um, I said I do I do classics and my mm -hmm. the classics faculty is like St Hugh's side of Oxford anyway, um, but generally to get anywhere in Oxford like like Taz said it's not it doesn't take me very long I I cycle um and yeah it's like five ten minutes cycle to get like most places I normally go um and to be honest sometimes I I walk sometimes as well and I quite I quite like it sometimes having a yeah. bit of like you know me time on my way to lectures or whatever <laughs> um it's quite nice um and yeah I I don't mind that we're a bit further out really at all it's yeah it's nice in a way and also we were we talked about um how we have like big gardens and we're we're um really lucky in that respect and i guess that's kind of because we're further out like i think probably more central colleges are a bit more um like limited on space but i'm not sure but because we're further out i guess we have um a bit more space i'm not sure <laughs> Yeah, and I think it's also really nice not to be on top of everything, like you said, to be able to go for the walk and have that headspace. And also, I guess, naturally, you don't get mobbed by tourists and yeah. all those things that colleges right in the centre come with. Um, and I'm sure you have your own lovely views around the college site, as you said, with the lawns and things. So we were casting our minds back to when you moved in and first impressions were like the accommodation and the site and everything. Um, but something I know that people watching this um, might want to know about quite pressingly is the admissions process and all the mysteries which that is shrouded in. So Gracie, did you apply to St Hughes? Um, and if so, was there a reason for that? I did not apply to Hughes, I applied to Exeter and um, I'm embarrassed to say that the reason why I didn't apply to Hughes is because I couldn't be bothered to walk there on the open day. That is generally the reason. <laughs> and out of the earth science colleges I visited on the open day, Exeter was my favourite. But fortunately, I um, got reallocated and now I'm at Hughes. And I'm very kind of thankful for that because I've been to Exeter a few times during term and... I know that I wouldn't have liked it there and I can't really imagine myself anywhere else other than Hughes now. Is there a reason why you think in hindsight Exeter is not for you or is it just like a gut feeling? Um, I think it's the fact to do that is so central and you got tourists everywhere and it's just so busy that as soon as you come out of the college there's crowds everywhere and I don't really like that. Whereas with Hughes because you're quite far out is really quiet. That is true. Um, a lot of people, I know that visiting colleges in person is really important to get a feel for it and I know it's how I decided on my college but not all of them, you can't see all of them in one day and you know there is so much to take into account it can be quite overwhelming. Um, so I guess that's why we're kind of talking to um, current students like you guys, um, say to our viewers well you know you're not at a loose end if you're kind of lost at looking for information and preparation for applying to a college at Oxbridge um, and that's why we have resources on every single one you could wish to know about so please do check out our web page and have a read of those if maybe you don't want to or you can't be bothered to go and walk to all of them it's totally fine no one can <laughs> I know I didn't see anywhere near the whole of Oxford when I went I think I looked at four colleges and when there's like over 30, that's just ridiculous. You can't wrap your head around it. So moving on then, there's one question which I must ask, and that is, what's the food like at St. Hughes? <laughs> at the forefront of everybody's minds. I don't know if anyone here is like vegetarian or maybe has some dietary preferences or whether it's all kind of, you pick whatever you like. Um, I'm actually um, vegan and I've gone vegan like since being at St Hughes um, so I would say that our, our food is um, really good I mean I don't know if you guys disagree but I think like I, I think our food is really good um, we have like our main hall um, which um, yeah that's just like standard every everyday uh, meals and we can get um, breakfast lunch and dinner 
um, during the week and then on Saturday and Sunday we get brunch um, in Hall and then we also have Dickie P or um, like Dixon Poon which is um, it's, it's more um, sort of a cafe and they do food and also um, drinks and stuff and people I guess that's more where people go um, for like a sociable lunch or to hang out or to work in there or um, that's a bit more expensive but really nice. Um, so you can get the best of both worlds really. Yeah exactly you have a choice. Um, that's nice I know that's one of the things we enjoy about our dinner at college is yeah it is actually really refreshing as like a social kind of a social activity it kind of gets you out your room and studying and like you just chat with your friends over the dinner table or whatever whether that's like relaxed or like in the big hall yeah Um, that's what I really missed this term because um I feel like the the last couple of terms when I was in Oxford like even if I was really really busy with work I'd still obviously like have to eat at some point so I could go and like if I didn't have time to properly socialize I could just make sure I went to meals with friends um obviously yeah like that's something that wasn't possible at home and I like it made me appreciate that that's something I really love about um being at uni and I'm really interested to hear that um you felt like you could um kind of start eating vegan like whilst you're at college because I know that's actually something that can prevent a lot of people from going vegan um, at some other places maybe is that the options and the variety just isn't there so I think that's a really important thing to consider to anybody watching that if you are looking to apply then it's not going to be a barrier for you or, you know you can still join in like meals and social occasions with friends so what about the more kind of formal side of things? Um, do you often go to formal hall dinners and do you guys have to wear gowns at St. Hughes? Um, we have formal dinners every Tuesday, I think. And then we also have special occasion ones for Christmas or Oxmas and um, Burns Night. Um, for our formal dinners, you don't have to wear gowns, um, but you do have to dress up a bit nicer than usual. Um, and I think our formals are quite well priced. Uh, I think is it ten pounds or is it eight pounds for a ticket? Really ten pounds. I think it's around ten pounds for a ticket, and you can also bring guests um, from other colleges or non-uni students. Oh, that's yeah, that's quite an occasion, and like for that good value, I'm assuming it's like a three-course meal that you're looking at, and it's like not your everyday food either. <laughs> that's something really yeah. nice to feel special but like still be a student yeah, they're really good for catering for different dietary requirements as well so um whenever we have a formal dinner i always get the halal option and then i know friends who get vegan meals veggie meals and um, you just have to specify when you buy your ticket and you can all still just enjoy it together at the same time yeah exactly that's really lovely yeah that's something slightly different to like when you all go supermarket shopping to like cook stuff together <laughs> Oh, that sounds lovely. And um, what about you, Gracie? I don't know, um, could you tell us a bit like the less kind of formal side of the social life at um, your college? Do you guys have bops? The like, yeah. fancy dress parties? Um, there's a bop usually every two weeks. Um, wow. And then bop, there's a welfare tea, which is great. Um, but on top of like social events, there's quite a few social areas in Hughes in general. So like Dickie P is kind of a big place to go. And even the library lobby area, I often find myself there speaking to a lot of people. It's kind of bad because it's a study place. But yeah, I was about um, to say, are you allowed to speak there or is it just like low key? Um, I think so. Yeah, because on, from the lobby, you've got separate rooms that are meant to be quiet but the lobby area is allowed to be a bit louder I think I hope so because <laughs> I've been here so many times we won't um, hold you accountable <laughs> no. that's an awesome then, thing but the library is a social space <laughs> yeah, it is. honestly um I know as well um in our library like there are a couple of just like small rooms and people will literally just go there just to see your face <laughs> while studying. Sometimes it's quite comforting. Mm. So I'm going to have to let you guys go soon. Um, but thanks for all that you've told us. I just have a couple of things to um, ask before you go. And that is, what 
is the most helpful thing that you have done since living at the college? Is it joining a society in which you can balance with your work and meet new people? Has it been learning not to take your studies too seriously? Or is it just kind of getting to know your way around? I think um, the most valuable thing I've learned is to balance work and social and also get enough sleep. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> on it, <laughs> I think a lot of people will be surprised to hear that that's actually possible. It is possible. You just have to have understanding friends. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I feel like I've learned a lot about like prioritizing and what what I want to priori prioritize and like how to do that and like get balance. So yeah, stuff like sleep and socializing and work and um, mm -hmm. yeah, I've thought about what's important to me and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know. And so will that make your second year a bit more? Will it make it easier? Will it make it more enjoyable? Hopefully, fingers crossed. I mean, I feel like um everyone really bigs up um like Freshers Week um as in like right at the start when you first joined um and um like Taz talked about that and obviously it is like a really amazing week and really fun but also I feel like um I feel like the 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 further in you get um like the better you know people so it's only it's only likely to get more fun as you get to know everyone better I guess um so yeah like fingers crossed for second year a message of hope for all of us <laughs> yeah. and finally Gracie have you been able to think of anything um honestly <laughs> this is so bad <laughs> I wouldn't blame you <laughs> there is a lot to take here <laughs> I would just say, honestly, just try and keep yourself as organized as best as possible and everything will kind of just fall into place a bit. And I don't really know, like I had a pretty, I don't know. <laughs> you had a pretty, what, what were you going to say? The first term is always a bit of a whirlwind and you come back and you're like, whoa. But then the second term, I find that you kind of get used to everything and everything falls into place and you get used to just the general life around college and the uni. Yeah, I definitely felt that too. I'm quite reassured by you saying that because yeah, my first two terms are very different stories. Like the first one you get there and like everybody's saying, go out, do this, do that, try everything. And sometimes it can be a bit too much. And I think it's really important to know that Oxford is always going to be there like your college and everyone in it they're always going to be there for you to as you say like get used to and enjoy it's really important to kind of pace your way through it and like you always adjust even if the first term is like a lot to take in at once um it is really enjoyable um and I think yeah we've all kind of said it but um there really is no pressure to like be working and doing stuff all the time. Like you can't have a social life without a working life and vice versa. Like you need to balance yourself. And I think that's really important. And I think in the chaos of Oxford life, a lot of people will forget that. Um, but to anybody out there, um, if St. Hughes, maybe they don't offer your course or this isn't for you, then please do not worry. You'll probably want to keep searching. And that's where our content covers every single Oxford college. Um, and we'll find you the one that is definitely made for you and you have our utmost support if you're looking to apply to Oxford or, or to Cambridge um, but particularly at St Hughes Oxford but the up guys <laughs> thank you three for joining us today I really hope people will have learned as much about St Hughes as I certainly have I didn't know there was such a big place and also such a friendly place and that's the impression I've got um, yeah, thank you very much. And I guess I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.